Hello, and welcome back to Learning with Lee. In today's episode, we are going to continue to discuss C style strings. In particular, we're going to focus on some of the different functions that exist for copying from one C style string into another C style string, and what some of the problems with those were, so that when we get to what C style strings are, we can understand why some of it is how it is. To begin with, we're going to start off with what is known as stir copy or strcpy. And what stir copy does is it copies from your second argument to your first argument. And because this is C, your first arg, well, both of these arguments are pointers. So each of these are character pointers. And once again, we can use arrays as though they're pointers. We can do stuff such as actually add a value to a pointer here. And you can see some stuff that's going on. So first case, easiest case to examine. We have this string here for A, we're copying it into B, and B has enough room for it because it has 50 characters of room. So, as we can see down here, it ends up correctly filling it in with the same string. Then, in case we wanted to say only get string here, we basically have to figure out, okay, how many characters is this? And, as you can see, six characters here, four characters here, two characters of white space, 12 characters, so we want to start at A plus 12, so this location here. And then it generates just string, which is this final one here, because it goes until it encounters that backslash zero that we were discussing in the previous episode, the null character. So then what happens if our area that we're inserting into doesn't have enough space? So we have this character C10. Is it going to be intelligent enough to realize that, hey, I need to cut this off early or is it going to actually just keep on going? Well, this is C. This is from some of the naive early days of programming. So it just copies from A into C, and we can see down here, that is certainly more than 10 characters. And the fact of the matter is that it just keeps overriding memory once you're beyond C. So whatever is next in memory, it just keeps adding on more characters and clearing out whatever was there previously. As we'll see in a second, that actually happens to be B, for what it happens to be overriding right now. However, there are some important things to understand, and this is one of the early, early exploits that was used, which things such as people using stir copy incorrectly, or even just using it in general, for things that basically would take in user arguments that would allow the user to supply some arbitrary length string so if the user ended up deliberately supplying something that was larger than the size of your buffer here, basically they could end up overriding memory, and if they were smart enough to understand how that would happen and knew enough about the hardware architecture, they could basically set it up so as that what ended up being the next execute instruction ended up being something that they customly put in, and then basically they could use it to load in a virus or a trojan or anything else like that, and that was one of the early, early exploits and one of the most common things. And this is one of the biggest problems with stir copy and one of the biggest reasons why C strings as a whole are very dangerous and can be very problematic and really should never be exposed to the user in terms of having the user have the ability to use them or provide input to them. Because otherwise you wind up with, in this case here, we're fortunate. It just happens to be overriding B so that we don't actually and we'll see that a little bit further down, but it isn't actually overriding any of these instructions. But in case, for example, here, I were to take string and I just started copying and pasting it a whole bunch of times, what you're going to see is, is that this is going to basically cause our program to crash. So build it, run it, and bam. Note here, and it even crashes on character B for this one here. And to a certain extent, that's because what it eventually winds up doing is that this one here eventually ends up overriding some of this, given that we were going from C to B. Presumably then, it would also then, wherever this string happens to be stored in memory for A, be where this ends up overriding to, and then you can possibly wind up with some really weird stuff in terms of how it's trying to copy stuff around. But also it's a matter of it can end up overriding pieces of memory it's not supposed to have access to, and it can end up doing a whole bunch of really nasty stuff. So that is something to absolutely be aware of in case you ever see somebody using stir copy, 
and it's one of the big reasons why you really should never use stir copy unless you know for certain that it's going to be safe and is going to work. But even then, it's a bit of one of those things of it's better in general to use this version down here that's included with the original instance of C and fixes a lot of that problem, and it's stir n copy. And the difference being is this third argument here, which is the number of characters you want to copy over. It still has problems, and we'll get into those in a second, but it does avoid a lot of the problems that stir copy has of just allowing you to go as long as you want. It still has the problem of, in case you allow, for whatever reason, the user to supply some string, and this value here is either dependent on the size of the string or some user input, then you can still wind up with a massive amount of your data being overwritten incorrectly, and you could still wind up with somebody using it as a means to exploit it and to load in a virus. For this one here, what we're looking at is we're just looking at, we're copying into B, from A plus 7, and just to simplify that, that's basically the letter T here is where it's starting out. And then we want to do four letters, so it'll give us test. Now, the important thing to consider is, is that will this then append on our null terminating character? Will it depend on that backslash 0? And the answer is that if we look down here where we have this line here, test NG, because you can see how this one here corresponds with this line here, string corresponds to this C out, and this one here corresponds with this. Well, this spot here for test ng is because the last thing within B was string followed by the backslash zero. However, because we only copied four characters, it doesn't copy in or append on a backslash zero. That's something we have to manually do, and this is one of the problems that still exists with any C style string is that you have to do a lot of this manual stuff of making certain that everything is null terminated. So it ends up getting this ng here because it only overwrites the stri right here. So we end up with test ng, which obviously is a problem. So basically we can insert the null terminating character, output again, get test correctly, and that happens to be a fine option. So then the thing is that let's take a look over down here. And this is just to reinforce the fact that it isn't depending on that null terminating character. If I give it 10 characters I end up passing in for what I'm copying across. If we look down, well, one of the biggest things that we can take a look at down here is, is that what is the first 10 characters? So here's 6, we have that, and then we have a few characters on here. So what ends up happening is, is that it winds up with this overriding some of the stuff that was already there, but in case you consider where we were previously with it in terms of how B was overriding other information in particular, how C was overriding B, and this is where it sort of comes obvious, is that what's over here is test, and that's because of the fact that it doesn't depend on that null terminating character. Normally you'd expect it to stop after 10 characters, and you'd be done. However, because it doesn't, it still uses whatever memory was there previously, which is from our previous job of overriding whatever was there. So you can see that it overwrites a couple things here, a couple different character-sized blocks of memory, and then we encounter test, and the only way we would encounter test being at that spot rather than, say, string, is because of the fact that that chunk of memory happens to be in B, because of the fact that that's what we just set to test. So that happens to be something that is definitely worth noting and considering in this weird case, but that happens to be one of the reasons why down here, and the correct fix for it is that you have to basically go, okay, I want the final one, and just where we start at zero for these counts, so nine is the tenth element. And what we then do is we put in the null character, then do the copy, but we can only copy nine characters over, and we wind up with stir copy te. So that happens to be what I really want to go over with stir copy and stir n copy, and it's important to understand that both of them do have some serious, serious problems and that they don't necessarily, well, stir n copy doesn't automatically include the null character, so that's something you have to manually do, as well as then that something such as stir copy doesn't care about what the maximum amount of memory in your target is, and frankly, neither does stir n copy. You just have to be intelligent about what n you give it. So it allows you to be a bit better than stir copy, but not 100% better. Also, if I wanted to, 
I could do things such as stir and copy in order to copy around specific parts of this. So if, for example, up in this section here, after I've copied B into A, what I could then also do is I could do something such as take this, go with, let's say, I want to copy into the beginning of B, and we're just going to go with A plus 12, and once again, we're going to go with six characters over here, and then we can build this and run it, and you'll see that we have this string test string because it allows us to basically overwrite what was in there of stir copy with the string string because it's copying these set of characters here to the first character in B. And you can then, if I want to, I could even do something such as, okay, let's do B plus 7, do that, and that would also then be a valid option, and it would give us this little string string down here. So those are a whole bunch of different things to be aware of when it comes to stir copy and seren copy. They're a fairly dangerous set of functions, and in general, we're not going to be using them because we're using C++ strings, which are a lot safer. But it is important to understand how this is done and why it leads to so many problems. Before I leave you this episode, I would like to cover one more similar function, and that is stircat and stirncat. And the difference between stircat and stircopy is, is that stircopy copies from one spot to the specified location in another string. Whereas what stircat does is it ends up concatenating from one string to the end of another string. So it has its own set of potential problems, and it does have a few similar problems. So to see it here, once again, we go from B to A, and for this case here, I'm just using banana phone as our two different words here. So then we output it, we get banana phone. Then down here, you can even see that we have something such as stir and cat, which once again, similar to stir and copy, ends up concatenating the first seven characters of A onto B. However, the important difference between stir and cat and stir and copy is that the concatenation version does actually append on the null character to the end of it. So if I'm saying that I want to concatenate seven characters, I'm actually concatenating eight characters. So that's an important thing to make note of, is that down here, there's actually a hidden eighth character that got concatenated on, so that happens to be worth noting, is that you need that extra space if you ever use something like stir and cat. There is another problem with this. Let's say that I had never done this initialization here. And we'll get into why this happens to be a problem in a second. But if I never do this, then there might not be any null characters within A. And the way in which stir cat works is it basically searches through A until it finds the first null character. And then it begins copying from B at that location, and so on and so forth, basically using stir copy to that pointer, effectively doing that same logic. And then the same thing can be said for sir and cat. But if for whatever reason, whatever you're copying to doesn't have any null characters in it, it's going to keep going through memory until it hits a null character. And that happens to be a serious, serious problem. So you have to be certain to actually initialize your variables and not just declare them up here and presume that they'll be initialized for you if you ever end up using these. And once again, in general, we'll be using C++ strings for anything that's actually meaningful. Then finally, if you really want to, because it's just pointers, you could try to concatenate A onto A. Unfortunately, that's going to have some rather undesirable side effects. Namely, it'll result in your program crashing as you can see right here, have to close it down. And that is why never try to concatenate something onto itself. So it <laughs> should be reasonably understandable that it's not something you want to do, but you might think, hey, I just want to put banana phone back to back. But that's not the way in which you should do that if you're going to try to do that. So that's an important thing to note, important thing to consider. In general, not really the sort of stuff that you want to be using in terms of stircat and stircopy, and we'll get into better versions of those in a couple of episodes. But really, that's all I want to cover for, for today, so thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful day.